welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. We are glad you joined us and we hope that you'll call in or join the conversation on Facebook. All the information of how to contact us is on the bottom of the screen. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about three things, starting out with uh, star 2069 signs, and then Columbus Day versus Indigenous Peoples Day, and finally talking about where do you get your news. <laughs> I'm joined by my co-host Lisa Jackson, and Hi. we hope you'll give us a call or check in on, on Facebook, email. Yeah, we would love to have your conversation because this is what makes it interesting. Um, before Margie and I do these shows, we have a lot of conversation back and forth on these topics, but really what we're looking for is, is your interest in, in what your opinion is on this. And, and of course, we'll, we're all going to learn from what everybody else has to say. Yeah, I so um, the, uh, the 2000, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, 2069, but it's hashtag yep. 2069-2069 is actually, sadly, the number of deaths in 2016 of opioid-related um, fatalities. In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts alone, which yeah. just blew me away. Um, this was started August 1st, 2016 in Rantham by the Trinity Episcopal Church, who had some deaths in their community. Yeah. And they, mm -hmm. they gave the signs mm -hmm. out free at first. Wow. Um, and now they're charging $12 just because they've already yeah, run through their budget. Um, it's a good recognition because it, that number is so profound um, when you think about it. Um, <laughs> that is a lot of people. It's terrible. I, 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 and just in one year. Uh, I mean, for example, the town I grew up in, <laughs> Idaho, that was a population. Oh, my gosh. You, you know what I mean? Not so anymore. It wipes out, yeah. wipes out the town. But, but and when you think of that number, that's, that's pretty relative. Yeah. To, I mean, if you, that's a lot of people. And, and I think, you know, we are all discussing the opiate crisis. Me personally, I'm quite involved with it. I've written grants to do opiate intervention or overdose intervention. Um, within Fall River, we have a group called Project Reconnect um, that every Tuesday, um, our volunteers go out with three police officers and they do follow up post overdose mm -hmm. and try to give them resources. And so they're coming out, they're, they're connecting with um, the well, drug please. addicts in Fall River area? Yeah, um, so the, the data comes out of um, EMS and it comes out of the police station. So but emergency it, medical services? Yeah, and, and what happens is we get the report Tuesday afternoon of the um, people that have overdosed in that area and most of it's in the catchment of St. Anne's Hospital hospital in St. Luke's. So we, we cover that area and, and we break it up and we actually go door to door. And generally what happens is we reach out to the family member because a lot of these folks suffering from um, opiate addiction um, have pretty transient lives because right. it's pretty hard for them to be functioning, um, you know, highly functioning if they overdose, you know. So right. it's, it's just... It's, it's, it's a sad thing, and to me, I just started doing it um, about doing a year what? and a half ago, getting involved in that opiate um, crisis because with the Medical Reserve Corps, I said, well, I have volunteers that could help out, and we could do some of the outreach, and most of the communities, the police departments, health departments, um, even the rehab facilities have very limited staff to do follow-up. Mm -hmm. So what we looked at with the MRC is to do the follow-up um, post MRC is? Medical Reserve Corps. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So you're sort of, you're part of the front lines of this. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's just, you know, to me it was, it took me back quite a bit because personally I'd never really had anybody that right. I'd lost, but then the more people I spoke to, one of my friends who's a public health nurse, mm. her son died, you know, and then I have a close friend at work, and the more I discussed it, the more I realized it touched all parts of life. It touched, mm. and it touches all demographics. It, right. You know, people think it's, you know, they you know, have the stigma and calling them junkies, but there, there's doctors, there's right. nurses, there's professionals that, that it's use, an addiction. It is. Right. And, and we actually have a, a conference coming up at UMass Dartmouth um, with Dr. Ruth Poti, and she, there's studies that show that there's the way the brain is formed in some people's body, that they're mm. more they can take it once and they'll be addicted. Right. You know, and I know for me when I've had surgery and I've taken any kind of painkiller or an opiate, 
it makes me very sick. So I can't, I can't even well, tolerate it. And I don't, it, when um, I had three C-sections, they gave me whatever they gave me, and I said, could I just have extra strength Tylenol? I yeah. honestly didn't right. even want, I didn't even want that. Same um, with my knee surgeries. And I had one yeah. theory, which was um, that my body would heal better without taking extra medication because right. I felt that the more that was in me right. the less able my body would be able to heal itself and I believe too if you pain is a good thing because it tells you when not to do things or right. when to slow down or, right you know but it, it's unfortunate that so many people have become addicted and, and what's happened in particularly in New England is fentanyls here and it's a hundred times stronger than heroin right so and they have the the additional mm-hmm. thing that was the car fentanyl yes and then the people can't even touch yeah the 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 first responders we have, have to be gloved and, and suited and masked yeah because if it has skin contact they there there have been some officers or ems personnel that have you know overdosed themselves and so let me ask about that because that <clears throat> it's hard for me to visualize and maybe the people watching don't know this either so if i if you if a person yeah if this mug had carfentanil and i went to put this mug somewhere just my, if it's airborne so does it get does so it generally it would the, Skins? Absolutely, uh, pores of yeah. Your skin. So it comes through the pores of your skin. Okay. So when you think and of into fentanyl, the so what fentanyl is is actually it's a patch that they give for pain control. Uh-huh. And the con- the way it's um, utilized is it's generally through the skin. Mm-hmm. So there's fentanyl patches. When I work for hospice, we use mm-hmm. fentanyl patches mm-hmm. on patients mm-hmm. all the time for pain control at the end of their lives. Um, uh, mm-hmm. So, but this this level in the car fentanyl is very, very scary because it also is airborne, so they can breathe it in. Yeah. So, you know, that is a very, very scary thing. And what's happening is Narcan's not hitting it. I do Narcan training and what's Nar- out- Narcan only is a heroin then, it's not a fentanyl? No, it blocks fentanyl because okay. that's any opioid. Okay. So what it does is it, in the part of the brain, there's an opiate receptor. Yeah. And so what it does is it blocks that opiate receptor so mm-hmm. no more opium can get in there. Mm-hmm. And so it stops temporarily mm-hmm. the overdose. And if there's still opium in the system, that person can still overdose. Mm-hmm. So the thing with that is you have to make sure that, you know, a lot of times people will give their family member Narcan and a half hour later they'll OD again. So it depends on the amount of um, opiates in So the Narcan their... effect mm-hmm. only lasts a certain amount of yes. time, and if that fentanyl is so powerful mm-hmm. in their system to they a certain can OD level, again. It just re- it's not gone. Yeah. It's just that that gate, and the gate goes down, yeah. it can get in again yeah, like exactly. that. Exactly, and that's wow. a good way to describe it because yeah, that's receptor, yeah. that's and what really what Narcan, and Narcan people are afraid of, but anybody that has someone in their family that abuses opioids you can get it at your pharmacy there's a standing order in the state of massachusetts right. that you can get uh our narcan and most insurances cover it right so you know there's a standing order if there's someone in your family that does mm-hmm. um abuse opioids i would highly recommend to have that on hand right and 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 the thing is is it will never hurt you right i mean there's no way that it's going to change the it's way it's just you, blocking it's receptor. just that blocker it doesn't give a drug mm-hmm. effect it's just a blocker yep that's so all it to does me, yeah. here's the choice <clears throat> death or narcan <clears throat> why wouldn't you it's the problem is 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 that just don't know well n- some they don't know some people are very good at hiding it some families are very detached and that's what we're finding with our um, project reconnect program Mm. but also with the fentanyl and car fentanyl the narcan doesn't touch it the average dose is two milligrams or four milligrams and usually what you get in a prescription is two now four milligram doses uh, that are nasal narcon no nasal oh, narcan. narcan and and the thing is is it sometimes it doesn't even touch it they can they can do 10 10 touch fentanyl. yeah well so, the other thing i heard about and there's fentanyl. no way to regulate it i mean like it's not like the narcan or the fentanyl uh, the narcan you can definitely regulate but the yeah. fentanyl i mean it's on the street so right. you know and whoever's mixing it may not even know the that's potency what i was going to say I know that it's been found in marijuana, for example. Sure. So they'll they cut put it the in with other drugs into yeah. something else. Yep. And then you don't know, you know, the person who's doing a drug right. doesn't know what what they're doing, right. basically. And that's the fear with a lot of children, you know, like we look at young kids 
and 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 you know even college students that they may try marijuana and per, and honestly I know people that are very for marijuana legalization but where I think a little bit it makes people relax about a, other drugs mm -hmm. so I think that's a little bit scary and and I mean if it's not if you're not buying marijuana from a store mm -hmm. you know like a, a you know that's Pardon me, I like the idea that it'd be regulated, yeah. but you don't know what's in it. Right, I mean, exactly. you don't, they could be cutting it with fentanyl, it could have cocaine in it, it could have, right. you know, and methamphetamines, it could have all kinds of anything. stuff, you know, so you just don't know. That's part of um, <clears throat> the justification for medical marijuana and for the marijuana regulation because then right. they could say this we know what's in this right it's been fda and this approved. has this much thc right and this is yeah and exactly so you know i'm on the fence a little bit that i come from a right. public health background and most people in public health are anti um legalization of marijuana and it's hard to regulate it so right but the 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 fentanyl in, in new england is a hot spot for it so i mean that's why we have so many deaths so it's it's just really yeah, you know awful. frightening. Well, the one um, the reason it started well, I don't know why it started in Rentham exactly, but they they actually had um, a mother there who had lost her son at age 33, oh, yeah. and her comment was that no one knew for 10 years mm -hmm. that he had this problem yeah. because they didn't want to admit it to their friends, right. they didn't want to talk about it, he didn't talk about it, right. he presented normal. Sure. There's functioning opiate, I mean, painkillers. Right. For so example, he there's he presented people. normal, but didn't know, <clears throat> you know, no one knew until he died right. at 33. So she was one of the ones in that church helping to get out this word. Information. You know, hashtags 2069. Then everyone says, what? what? Well, that Who? number is very it's profound to me. Yeah. So we have one, um, oh, good. actually two comments. Um, one from John. Thank you, John. Do we have mm -hmm. any idea how many people in Hopkinton have suffered addiction to opioids? Um, I know Denise Hill. The addiction you can't get a f handle on because that's HIPAA regulation. The right. only way we could potentially know is we would know overdoses. So the addiction, right. there may be statistics that addiction facilities would put out. There, actually, there's a Seven Hills right here in uh, Milford office um but the well, thing our, is um, our police probably <clears throat> do have that information right not and the denise, addiction but the overdose denise hildreth who's our um youth services worker i was hoping to get her in here yes has gotten a grant um from the state to address opioid um addiction and, and issues and i know that governor baker is working really strongly oh, he's on, amazing on opioid abuse so uh, i think um, I know that Hopkinton is really addressing it. Yeah. And James asks, thank you very much, James, for your email. Do our police carry Narcan? Yes. Can have they used it? Do you know? I do know for a fact they have it. They have used it. Um, the schools even have it. School, yeah. nurses, school nurses have, have it. have it. I carry it. Because, I mean, even <laughs> I in the elementary schools, there mm -hmm. could be a parent. Yeah. There could be uh, anybody yeah. in the building. Yeah. Who Someone has that's an working issue. in the building. And, right. Yeah. So I thank God it is something that can be used as that first And you don't line have to be medical, and I should say right. that. You don't have thank to be you medical. For your emails, yes, guys. thank you. And and please follow up with other questions beyond those two if you have more. Um, you don't have to be medical to carry it. The training is so minimal. You can go online and Google search it, and it shows you how to administer Narcan. Yeah. We used to have like a two-stage process, and I actually teach Narcan training um, that we did. But now it's it's an uh, inhaler. It's a single a shot, so yeah. it kind of keeps it. It's, it's awesome. It's pretty good. So if anybody suspects, I think it's. I, I I was even like when I learned about this, I'm like, why should I carry Narcan? But I work in well, emergency shelters. I'm all over the place, and and it's another you never know. to me. And I, mm -hmm. I try to keep my first aid and my CPR mm -hmm. and my AED training yeah. active, just because I would like to help. Right. I, if I see someone having an issue, I would like to help. And them. if you give them Narcan and they're not overdosing, it doesn't it even doesn't matter. Affect them. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to yeah. do anything. So it seems like a good thing. Yeah. So better safe than sorry. The other thing mm -hmm. I saw um, in the same article was that there's something called the SAFE so it's an acronym or something, but SAFE Coalition, which supports addicts and families, and they are going to rally 
uh, at 10 a.m. October 28th on Rentham Town Common. So connected to the same sure. effort for hashtag 2069. And there is a lot of that go going on um, throughout the state, actually. Um, we actually had two walks um, in Norton and North Attleboro. Yeah. We do Good. something monthly in, in Fall River. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to build that awareness. And I think as parents and friends and family members and neighbors, just don't disregard it if you suspect something. Look a little closer. Don't be you Well, nosy. it's all that if you say if you see something, say something goes right. the wrong way. So, you so know, let me just finish. Oh, um, go ahead, yes. Uh, so 10 a.m. October 28th, Rentham Town Common. Excellent. If people want to go for this safe coalition or if you hear of any of these events. Sure. Um, and they're calling it No Shame Erasing the Stigma, yeah, which goes perfect. back to, you know, if enough people know about a person's struggle right. maybe there is something or someone or some way to help that person and there's so many connective services in massachusetts um that you, we can connect you with and the stigma is going away and what we're even finding there's a fear that you won't get a bed um, we can get people in fall river area which <clears throat> has a higher rate of overdose is um, you know you know we can get people usually in that day so well and i know again denise <clears throat> hildreth of the youth services <clears throat> Call, call to her she does a lot of that she right. does you know intervention if it's a young person she can you know get them to where they need to right. go and our police department is fabulous we do have another email okay. says how does a regular citizen get to carry narcan yeah. i would contact the police department check in with them the easiest way is actually just to go to your pharmacy cvs walgreens rite aid all have a standing order you don't, and a standing order means that you can get that prescription without a prescription. So you can walk in and you can say, I, I need Narcan. You don't even have to give a, a, a reason. And they have a standing order. You talk to the pharmacist about it and they will give you Narcan. So one question about that, <clears throat> if a, a baby gets Narcan, it does it affect there's nothing no. okay so it's just an opioid re, re, uh, a blocker blocker yeah it just blocks okay. that receptor that's all yeah. it does okay and that's you know a lot of people when I teach it and they, they see the mist they're like is it gonna bother me I said no yeah unless you're taking opioids then you lose your your effects of the opioids yeah but um but really it's it's quite a safe that's, that's amazing that's why they have the standing order and and, and it's so I mean they can we can we give it out at our Narcan trainings yeah yeah well that is it's truly a miracle then yeah you know because it doesn't do any harm it can only help yeah, and, it's just and a do blocker. well yeah. so we have a um a pat likes uh we have a like from pat thanks, pat, pat likes our facebook <laughs> video thanks pat um so i think we'll take a break right here yeah um and we'll come back to our second section yeah second and segment. our and our second section is um columbus or indigenous day um, think about it. Um, call us back and let us know what you yep. think as we have Phone our discussion. Number should be on the bottom of the screen. Yes, 508 435 7880 or contact us any of those other ways on the screen. Right. Thank you. Gone all about Hopkinton. Mary Arnott introduces us to the new library director, Heather Backman. Space in what used to be sort of the old circulation area. Um, and then we have a classroom downstairs. So um, that's really exciting. We will be permitting um, nonprofit and community organizations to book those. Um, information to be forthcoming sometime in October about that. This week on the Golden Pan, Masha, Lisa, and Pat give us a lesson on making potato knockies. There's a lot of, everybody at Sweet Chicago. But I would think once you've made the dough and you're making, you're in that process of making them, I would want to make like a, another one just so I can throw it in the freezer. Exactly. You could either freeze the dough or the, uh, the yucky, right. whatever you want. This week on Senior View, Mary sits down with Marlene and Patty to talk about all the services and programs available at the Senior Center. And we're back. 
and we are going to talk about Columbus Day versus Indigenous Peoples Day. What do you think? Should we still have Columbus Day that honors Christopher Columbus finding America? Or should we have Indigenous Peoples Day because they were already here when he found America? So um, we're going to say a little bit about what we found online, what our opinions are, but we really want to have a conversation. So please give us a call. Yeah, and it was interesting. Um, Margie and I did independent um, studies and we came up with the same information. Yeah. So that was kind of good. Yeah. Um, But I found it quite interesting because, you know, my feelings of Columbus Day was like, okay, well, the Europeans discovered America. They crossed the Atlantic Ocean and this is the Americas. So I was like, okay, well, and then I read more into it, you know, and I, you know, obviously they were looking for the trade route and things like that for getting spices and getting over to Asia and things like that. But did they, you know, like, I guess they did discover America, but then is it really... The more I read about it, I got a little bit more opinionated than I was before. And then the Indigenous Peoples Day, I'm like, well, does that, I mean, I almost felt like it should be a separate day and celebrate Indigenous people. Like, I mean, I think the stigma behind the two, I mean, you want to recognize that, you know, Indigenous people certainly suffered because, you know, when Europeans came over here, they brought smallpox and all kinds of stuff like that. And there were, you know, they... It you know really put a lot of indigenous people into slavery and and treated them very poorly, but like how do you you know well, what was your opinion on it? I, I thought it was. I, kinda... I, I have lots of things I could say. Um, before I say that, I want to say Tammy likes our Facebook video. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Tammy. Um, yeah. So yeah, so this it was it's so interesting because first of all, it's called America because Amerigo Vespucci right discovered it right. Right. And, and I then that. Christopher and Columbus, sure. that just popped in my head. Yeah. Christopher Columbus actually thought there was no continent right. in between Spain and and Japan and, and China. Yeah. He thought he was going to just, oh, no, everybody's crazy. Yeah. I'm just going to f- go across. The earth is not flat. It's right. just going to be they like that. smaller Yeah, earth he's theory. completely. Yeah. But he ended up down in the... Like the, the leeward I- and the whatever islands. the islands are down, yeah. like San Salvador, El Salvador, down. It's not even. Yeah. It's sort of Central America. Yeah. And uh, so the Americas, yes, but not North America. So right. so this video right. that I saw was yeah. talking about mm-hmm. when the Italian immigrants came in. Yeah. There was some some resistance. Right. And um, so the Italian oh, Italian Americans started nice. to say, "Hey, we are cool. You know, we're worthy. We're wonderful." Look at what happened, Christopher Columbus. You know, and so then they started the movement in 1900s. Yeah, early 1900s. Yeah, early 1900s. But before that, and then they took it to um, Franklin Roosevelt, who by 1937 made it a federal holiday. Yeah. So that's interesting. Like, those are things as an American citizen I honestly didn't realize. You know, innocently enough, I'm like, oh, okay, that's when Europe discovered America. But then, when, of course, when you pull the cover off things you you see different different things and uh, and uh, you know one we want to hear your opinion on this because yeah, i think please. it's so interesting yeah and and margie what are your thoughts on the indigenous people day i think well, it's wonderful i, I grew too. up in right. idaho some of my best friends lived on an indian reservation yeah and they are shoshone bannocks and i love their culture i loved going to the powwows and some right. of them are still very close friends of mine right so to me I, we always celebrated right their culture well, a lot you know? i i grew up um in wabin okay which is part of newton yep wabin exactly. means the wind it's a native american right. mashpee wampanoag name yep so um i kind of grew up sort of honoring everything my mom was born in china you know, my dad sang at a temple, even though he wasn't Jewish. So yeah, we kind of yeah, grew up honoring, honoring many cultures. cultures. Yes. So to me, Indigenous Peoples Day, they were here. Yeah. So we should honor right. the people of this of America right, right. who were the original people of America. And actually, I did my Ancestry.com. Did you? I have 1% Native American. No kidding. I don't have it's any. It's very funny. Yeah. Well, you don't know that. <laughs> yeah. No, I did it. No, you did. I did. No, I, I did, have 1%. Uh, so it's hilarious. Points, but but yeah. um, so I thought. So I thought the whole. Of course, of course, there should be. Right. An honoring of them. But that was I mean, one thing I, I worry about. The, and that's one thing that, and I didn't think about this until I did the research. I'm like, well. 
certainly you want to bring up the the issues that came up with Columbus coming here and all of the mm -hmm. mistreatment of indigenous people but also yeah. like I look at almost like recognizing America is the pilgrims and Thanksgiving and you know what I mean so like Columbus Day I was like okay well we did or we didn't discover America uh, that you know that was the time that they decided to earmark that and it was so much later. It was 1937. 37, right. You know. Well, just to recognize his contribution. Right. Okay? But, right, and, and I have answers on the Mayflower, too, which is kind of funny. But, um, so the thing is, indigenous people say, I, I really, really, really feel that our country comes out. I mean, they, the earth here, the, yes. the land here, yes. all of it is so beautiful. Right. I think of Standing Rock. Yes. when they're trying to put a pipeline right through their sacred right. land right. all of that all of the reservations the trail of tears when the, when right. people were moved out of their homes right. because the people wanted to live there it just well the even in home. my generation and i will age myself i was born in 1969 when i was in high school that's when they started integrating people from the reservation into our high schools and it was very benign it wasn't like anything that happened in Boston but we're a smaller community and we had already kind of been integrating but when you think about it within my generation my friends that are American Indian that lived on the reservation and a lot of them still do mm -hmm. weren't going to the same school as I was Crazy. in the same community they were on the reservation yeah but in a way I respect that. I mean, they, and the and on the reservation, still they alive could and well still and, learn their culture, right? You know, instead of losing that culture and just becoming part of the mass. And it did kind of happen that way because I a know. lot of my friends that I saw right. that integrated, in, and I have friends naturally because I lived right next to Fort Hall, yep. and um, you know, they the culture got lost a little right. bit. Right, and that would that concerns but me. But I think the reason behind it, and and from being from Idaho and, and seeing some of this firsthand is I think they wanted the resources to be available to the students of course. And, to, and for the education level to be right. the same, which I don't, I think it's kind of silly they wouldn't have it on the reservation. But I think during that time, the segregation, they were trying to break down those walls, which is a good thing, but mm -hmm. you know, but I'm going a little I, off I track. Think, no, I think, yeah. they, I think you're right. I think if there's an ideal, it would be to have access to to the education and resources. system as yeah. well as support the cultural aspect of their right. heritage. That's what. So um, Indigenous Peoples Day, st there was something in 1977. Yeah. In 92, it was first marked as a holiday intended to recognize and respect the proud traditions and customs of North Americans' great tribes. So right. rather than saying, you know, let's honor them because all these bad things happened to them, right. it's more of saying, Let's look at this right. amazing group of people in our midst, right. you know, and honor them. Oh, and the value of it, now that we yep. look at the environment, how all they always treated the land. I mean, that was one thing Mother that Earth. I always felt so yeah. strongly connected with my friends. Exactly. That, you know, they always respected the earth and respected animals and respected others and respect, not that you know we don't but I just thought that symbiotic relationship and how they understood how everything was intertwined how it was important to take care of the air and the water and I the, agree with you the earth and, yeah, and that was probably agree. something that really yep. stuck true in my being as a Me human too. being I'm the same you know? way. we have Kathleen also liked our Facebook video Thank thanks you. Kathleen um, and just to say some of the places um, 23 new places for the first time in 2017 are going with Indigenous Peoples Day right. rather than Columbus Which Day. Which I was surprised too. Austin, Texas, Salt Lake City, Utah, Santa Barbara, California, Silver City, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Miami County, Kansas. Um, back, I think in 92, the first city Berkeley. was Bangor, Maine. Oh, No, sorry, Berkeley, Berkeley. California was yeah, first, was you're right. And then Oberlin, Ohio, Bangor, Maine were some of the early ones. And Seattle. South Dakota, the state did it. Yep, that's right. South yeah. Dakota was the first state in 92. Yep. Which has the Black Hills, which is a huge exactly. Indian yeah, right. reservation, so, which I've visited, yeah. So, yeah, so it challenges mm -hmm. the idea that Christopher Columbus discovered America right. because these people were here. Right. No one discovered America, but... Well, it's a relatively new holiday. I right. Guess, if you think about it, and, yeah. and holidays are wonderful, and but I think, and actually, I'm gonna step on a soapbox for a minute. I think yeah. holidays have turned into 
a commercial thing, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, for yes, lack of a better yes, term, you yes. know what I mean? Like Christmas, you yeah. know, like in, in, you know, even Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's probably still pretty wholesome, but Christmas is a gift giving time. And well, really they it's, buzz right over Thanksgiving. Yeah. You have stuff for Halloween and then it's Christmas. Right. You lose Thanksgiving completely. And then Easter completely. even, you've lost sight of, you right. know, what the origination of Easter is. And, yep. you know, it's funny, I you know, you, you talk about your father, um, working I always had high respect for the Jewish religion Except me and too. I, I worked in that area because I loved their holidays they respected their elders they they had atonements they actually those holidays mean something they're I not agree. so commercial so and I my ex-husbands have you know that I have ex-Jewish family members and I love being part of that yeah. because of the traditions and the honoring of things that made so so much sense right you know, it reconnects you with your Rosh family Hashanah, Yom and Kippur, you, mm-hmm. you go and you say i'm sorry to the person that you offended which is directly awesome. yes you know and that's what you do we have um kathleen is continuing thank you kathleen mm-hmm. saying it's crazy to me that we only learned the truth about columbus as adults yeah because we did we I, had the whole honestly myth, i mean i kind of knew in but school. then yeah you know chris in 1492 christopher, christopher <laughs> columbus sailed the ocean blue i forget the song right but um, yeah, that's what we were it. taught, <laughs> and right. um, that's what we grew up with. Um, two other states are on board now: Alaska and Vermont. Yeah. So, um, you know, to me, uh, Christopher Columbus. You know, I think that, I think too that I honor. I guess uh, Los Angeles is going to be on board in um, 2019. Um, so obviously, we should honor Italian Americans. Sure. And if they want to, and, and I mean that can be part of our feast history. Feast of Saint Anthony, and you know they have those wonderful ah, celebrations. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure doing it Columbus Day, on Columbus Day is is honoring um, that in the same way. Well, it's interesting the origin of it, and I, I yeah. love the idea that you know certain groups lobby for different things, and I think that's what's happening with Indigenous Peoples Day. I, I agree. It's, you know, it's but a, it's interesting how movement. how it changes our history and how it yeah. changes our thought process and how we think about things. Right. You know, yeah. honestly, I just thought, oh, Europe found America, <laughs> and I didn't really even you know go much deeper because I always associated you know like America really the discovery of the pilgrims coming here and, nah. and you know but you know so Kathleen also says my kids are not school age yet uh-huh. but I do wonder what schools are teaching today about this um, in the second I'm in the second third right. grade school we don't teach about Columbus in second and third grade yeah we, at that point we're talking about Celia's the pilgrims learning and the bit. Wampanoag equally mm-hmm. So, um, and then we do a visit to uh, Plymouth Plantation, which I love. Love it there. And I've been um, there so many yeah, times. so I, I th- in these schools, at least at second and third grade, um, they're getting the the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag. Um, my personal feeling, I never felt like the Pilgrims discovered America. I felt like they were escaping right. that punitive, they restrictive were. <laughs> religious environment. Let's get out of here. We heard about this place over there. Yeah. Let's go right. on these three leaky boats and oh, oops, two sunk. Let's yeah. all get on this one and <laughs> right. be all crammed together. 102 people and some died. Oh, well. Yeah. You know, so it's just a crazy history to get over here on the Mayflower. Um, and then when they got here, they actually you know, there were some places they landed that the natives were not appreciative of the visit. Sure. And then when they landed finally Provincetown well, like, and came into Plymouth Harbor, though the Wampanoag, Mashpee Wampanoag, were welcoming, you know, right. bless their souls. And, and it's it interesting. Us. And that's well, what think Thanksgiving about it was. from our standpoint. Like, yeah. you know me, I have an open door policy at my house. People go visit the horses all the time. But I don't know if I'd want people living in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it that yeah, way. No, I, I, yeah, I mean, you, you know what I mean? I, so, deer are okay in my yard. I, yeah, I yeah. Them and our turkeys, turkeys and stuff like that. But when you think <laughs> about it, I mean, how generous of them. Well, and that's how, it. Because they how were accepting. To well, coexist. it wasn't theirs. It was... The earth is not right. They yeah. coexist with these new people yeah. coming on the sh- boats, which they'd never seen before. Right. So I, I never really thought about it as... Uh, we, it was discovered. Yeah. You know, I mean, to me, Vikings, and I have some of that too. I have the lots Vikings of that. came <laughs> down. Vikings did whatever they did and yeah. traveled here and there. And, you know, of course they were here. You're right. And Native Americans were here. And so, so many people were here before Columbus came. Right. But I thought what was interesting about Columbus is that he was 
brave enough or crazy enough, I don't know, yeah. to to invent this thing. I know I can get there if I right. just go this way and give me some money. No one did. Oh, it was amazing. And as a mariner, as a discoverer, exactly. as a traveler. Right. I mean, that so was, I respect I, my his impressed. bravery. Yeah. I respect his perseverance. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get this money from somewhere. Okay. Right. Ferdinand and Isabella. That's what I do for grants. <laughs> right. So, like so I have to respect menu. that part of, right. of, of his character and, and persistence and right. Being able to get the boat over, and I think I read somewhere that he had been a pirate at a certain point. Oh, I'm sure those. You know, those so, disciplines so there's a very interesting, a very interesting history there. Right. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I think. But think we of the honor. time. Exactly. I mean, think of the time it took him to. I mean, he probably spent thing. what percentage of his life do you spend on a boat? Right. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you think about the time involved in that right. too. Is it? That's impressive. But now, while we're talking about this, actually, I want to. I meant to do this at the beginning. Tomorrow is the first day of Diwali, Diwali, which is the uh, holiday. Speaking of holidays, um, that Hindu people celebrate, ah. sort of like New Year, sort of like. Passover, okay. it, which is where it's a new beginning. They clean the houses. They have new clothing. Um, festival of Lights. Oh, so it's right. always fascinating to me how different holidays and different traditions have common elements. Right. So it's a beautiful. So happy Diwali to everyone who's watching that may be celebrating. Museum of Fine Arts is having a, a, an evening that. celebration for Diwali tonight. Yeah. So, so you know what's interesting too, and I guess this begs the question a little beyond what we're talking about Columbus and Indigenous days. I think it's important to recognize all cultures and, and the good in them and, yes. and different different types of people. Like to me, it's so fascinating. I had the pleasure of traveling many parts of the world and I was always so interested in family dynamics and how churches integrated into communities and what their holidays meant. Right. And you know, and it you know, so many of them are so respectful and I so agree. they honor their their you know elders elders they mm -hmm, honor the land they honor food they honor you know there's many things and I think you know Mm -hmm. coming off this conversation it's very interesting because it's very poignant but also I think as you know as human beings it's nice to honor all all others and all other um yes just beliefs and and and, and, and learn and learn from them I mean because these are years that have that it's been done right I agree with you completely um yeah, I think that the, this particular one, Columbus Day, yep. to me, I, I, it seems more like a day off from school. Yeah. It seems like a shopping opportunity yeah, that's rather what, than really honoring anything right. meaningful at this point. So I hope you found that our conversation was interesting and we're going to take a break and we'll be back in yeah. a few minutes. This week on Business Matters, Tim Kilda finds out why Statline Brewing owner Ted Twinney calls Hopkin and home. ...lives with in terms of putting down our new roots here. So uh, the people, obviously, there's a lot of things that Hopkinton offers that brings that in, from the parks to the schools to uh, the community and history here, the race. Uh, there's so many things that I think make it, you know, kind of a fun uh, and special place to be. I'm Haley. Hi, I'm Haley. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal and we love H-Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H-Camp. And I volunteer for H-Camp TV. And I watch H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. We love H-Camp TV. This week on HK, the Downtown Corridor Project Public Forum took place at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Mass Dot and District uh, Office in Worcester contacted the town and said, hey, this is an opportunity. You need to explore this because we can really make some improvements along the corridor with congestion if we're able to uh, acquire some property and do some realignment of the intersection. Expansion of the town common and green space in the town was also mentioned by Norman. You know, some of the data that And we're back. (laughs) So the last segment tonight is going to be talking about where do you get your news? 
Do you listen to the radio every morning? Do you look on Facebook? Do you go to Hop News in town? Uh, do you read the newspaper, Hopkinton Independent, Metro West, Crier? What do you do? How do you get your news? How do we know it's not fake news? Right. And that's such an interesting conversation because I actually speak to college students in my professional life all the time. And I thought it was interesting. I always ask, I talk about disasters, about preparing for disasters. And how would you know if there was a disaster? And I always find it very yeah. profound. These are college students. A lot of them graduate students. They're like Facebook or my parents. And I'm like, yeah. You know, to me, that always takes me back as someone that does disaster response for a living. I'm like, right. Facebook, well, geez, you know, I, I love Facebook and I, I get a lot of information from there, but I don't know if that's the credible source I would use for well, for disasters. And, and certainly my parents I would trust, you know, but, you know, if during a disaster, most likely they're not going to be able to get through to you to tell you the news of what's going on. Well, also, given the information we know now about Russian hacking into Facebook right. and creating advertisements sure. that so were easy. not real. You know, so if you're looking at Facebook and something pops up, and I am guilty I, of, too. of seeing a, a picture and a tagline, and I think, That interests you. Really? I gotta, I gotta and, see that. Yeah. yeah, really? But sometimes there are some that, you know, you can kind of say, that can't, that can't really. Right. And then I, I, I have some friends who are, I really appreciate, will say, this has been, you know, debunked. This is not real. Right. Check the source. So, um, yeah. So Facebook isn't right. has, been, has been shown to be hacked and and right. not not accurate. Well, and the thing, just on my end, I'm just going to put on my disaster response hat. I always look at public officials, but in the current political climate, there has been public officials that don't necessarily put forth the most honest yeah. um, information. So, you know, generally I, you know, in disaster situations, you wanna listen to local um, mm -hmm. emergency managers, fire chiefs, police chiefs, you wanna listen to the state and things like that. But now in a political environment that we're in, you worry about even public officials because there's so much infighting going on that they use it as a tool to sway certain votes or certain the way things are happen. So to me, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the news, I always struggle. I'm like, well, what what makes it valid? What makes me think it's believable? But it, me thinking it's believable doesn't necessarily, I have bias. So maybe I want something to be right. believable. Or you're and, already leaning a certain direction sure. and someone says, and yeah, makes right. sense. So yeah. you and I both did some research. Yeah, we did. We did. So I have my <laughs> so, finger right here. Yeah, so and, go um, ahead and tell me what so you the, found. So I loved that, you know, when I looked up which, I just Googled which mm -hmm. news is reliable, and Wall Street Journal, across the board, in every category, and this, this right. article, this research had the categories of um, mostly conservative, and two, yeah, consistently yeah. conservative, um, mostly liberal, mostly uh, consistently liberal, mostly liberal, mixed, mostly conservative, and consistently conservative. So five right. categories. Wall Street Journal was across the, the board only trusted one. and the only one trusted right. by all of those categories. Right. Then you had some that leaned way in one direction, right. way in another direction. Um, it wanna? was interesting. So it was funny. A lot of my friends follow BuzzFeed. Oh. And I thought it was interesting the more people, because like I have friends, they're very, you know, like I have a lot of respect for, and I was like, wow, BuzzFeed got more more distrusted than trusted. So I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, BuzzFeed in the name there is yeah. already there. I'm thinking, but, but there's a what? lot of people that listen to that. So I yeah. think that's kind of interesting, you know, and, and as I looked at these, to me, I've always liked public Public radio, yes, yeah, exactly. PBS, um, yep. BBC, yep. you know, mm -hmm. and I do appreciate CNN, yep. you know, and I know that, but that, again, that's me wanting to hear certain things, so I thought it was just very interesting statistics mm -hmm. on what people, because CNN got the same as NPR and PBS. Right, and they came in number four yeah. ranking. Um, James says, my informal poll at HHS showed close to 100% of kids use Instagram and few use Facebook. Facebook is not cool. It's our generation. Yeah, it's not cool <laughs> for high school. They like Instagram, Snapchat. Right, they do. And then, so so the poll that I looked at, Wall Street Journal across the board, number one. Mm -hmm. Then the second one that was most people, Actually, The Economist. Be, uh, 
Reuters. The Economist, the BBC, yeah. and Google News. So that's interesting. Right. And third I was ABC News and USA Today. Right. And then fourth, NPR, PBS, CBS, NBC, CNN, and Bloomberg News. Right. Um, which is not the same as Breitbart, which is very right. slanted. So, um, so you know, this interesting thing I found in this search too. There are a lot of fact-checking sites, which I oh. thought was really interesting because I've done a good amount of that because I was always very interested, particularly in our presidential election, what's real, what's not. Yes. You know, because there was so much, and and that's that's um, that's what happens. But I ran across this, and I'm trying to find it. Excuse my. That's okay. Um, I can jump in. Yeah. While you're looking, I know online sources. Uh, the ranking was online CNN. Then ABC, yep. the third NBC, four CBS, and five would be Fox online. And then, in terms of the audience ideology, yeah. um, they kind of had uh, liberal to conservative. Right. So Fox News, four percent mostly liberal, uh, four percent consistently liberal, fourteen mostly mixed was kind of thirty-seven percent, twenty-seven. So that leaned more uh, conservative. Right. MSNBC leaned more liberal. Right. Wall Street Journal was even across the board. The Daily Show, obviously, leaned very uh, liberal. Right. And Rush Limbaugh, obviously, leaned very the conservative. conservative. Yeah. So I think it, you know, some people listen to what validates their own beliefs and biases, like you were saying. Right. So if you're, if you're mostly conservative and you listen to Rush Limbaugh, you're going to nod your head a lot. Yeah, that's what right. I think. Right. So, but in terms of Truth. What's truth it's and true. what is valid news, right. Wall Street Journal seems to be. Well, and it's funny. I've always felt that that was a very valid news source. And it was interesting as I was looking up, like, what's, as I started tangling, I was like, I'll do this real quick. I'll figure this out. You know, and, and I've been doing it ad hoc for many, many years. But the thing is, is you want to look at URLs. You want to look who's quoted. You want to look at certain things that validate that you know that news source because a lot of times stuff will come up it'll say cnn it'll say dot com but then it'll be co or something on the other end and, yeah. and then if you have pop-up ads and some of you that have clicked including me on pop-up ads on facebook i'm like oh well then not yeah, there's not, some not, questionable not not like really bad but it's like this person looks like this when they were a kid <laughs> you know i'm like well maybe this is not a credibly news source right so you know so as i as they've been on my news feed on facebook i block them yeah and i'm kind of cleaning house a little bit yeah and, that's you know, a good idea and and just because i'm like well how much information and how does it affect you emotionally we talked about I work in emergency preparedness I was in two meetings today we were talking about doing stop the bleed and and post Las Vegas we talked about that in our last show and how does news affect you how do you feel about it if it if you're going through your day listening to it and I was at a coalition meeting yesterday yeah and our state coordinator she was just like I had to shut it off because it was mm -hmm. it, it was it was really taking me to a point where it wasn't healthy anymore so you know how do you how do you balance that we want to hear from you guys you know what what where do you get your news and I think we just have so much information it's hard to really filter through what what is the truth and that's what right. I want to know I want to know what's the truth right exactly. and I think that's why the First Amendment so important the freedom right. of press exactly you know I think it's very very important that the press yeah because we need to hear we need to hear the truth and if it's just government produced news like I, I want to say North Korea or China they're yeah, only hearing well, yeah. they're only hearing what they're allowed to hear right and so right. their their view of the world is so molded right. by what what they're being allowed well, it's to hear. It's propaganda. It's it, it's propaganda. And we saw it in in Germany and, and things like that in Europe in World War Two. Yeah. But Mike says thing, yeah. on on okay. uh, email. Mike says I mostly trust news reports that send a reporter to the scene, mm -hmm. not just sitting in a studio and talking. Oh, that's good, a good point. That's a Thank very you, Mike. good point. So if someone's there saying hey, we're reporting yeah, live, yeah, and, and you visually and you see, have a visual. You know, I actually have to say the Las Vegas was so graphic. I didn't see anyone actually get shot, yeah. which I appreciate. But, but the fear and the but angst just seeing the and it's you know just, the panic ugh. and running and hearing the blah 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 blah. Yeah. While Jason Think Aldean of was on the stage, oh and then 9/11, <laughs> you could see people jumping out of the buildings. Right. So that is graphic 
and it's I'm getting chills just thinking yeah. about the 9/11 video. Yeah. So we want to know the truth. Yeah. Um, but we can choose how much to watch too. Well, and I like also think us as consumers, you know, back to the First Amendment, we need to pick credible news sources. Right. We need to make sure that we follow and we fund, or we, you know, mm-hmm. we we pick credible news sources because the more people that pick non-credible news sources, right. it it feeds it's them. Out there. Right. You know what I mean? So I think us as consumers, it's very important to really not get lazy and get caught up in some of that propaganda and yeah, really and it feeds into it and makes it grow bigger right if you feed that monster mm-hmm. it's going to take over yeah and i really feel us as citizens it's our responsibility right. again honoring the first amendment that you know that we allow those credible news sources to succeed and and be out there at the front and center. So I have um, an email from John, which says, I love Snopes.com. Yes, that's so what I was looking for, Snopes. That so. is a very well-researched. Yeah, and that's um, the one I bumped on the cross, and I thought it was yes. in my list, but it was great. Yes. But it was funny, the news stories that came up, because I looked at the top 40, and it was funny because it kind of scopes out what they hear and what, and to me, I was like, wow. Some of them that sounded so outrageous were true and some that, you know, weren't that, you know. Like, yeah, that's so funny. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm like, wow, maybe I should be looking So here. Snopes, I love the name. It's like Scoop. That's what I was trying to look when I, yeah. At the same time, I love it. Who yeah, ever thought of that? But, that but the other thing I want to say was what I do every day is when I wake up, I turn on, um, I turn on the news. Yeah, I like so, our local news. I right, mean, it's I what like I'm saying. I listen to WBZ. Yeah, ten thirty. Oh, I listen. So to I drive. feel like yeah. you know, I I kind of I do trust them. Yeah. To validate their news sources. Yeah. To report, you know, credible right. information. Right. And and I'm not just talking weather. Right. You know, because I do listen to the weather. What's going to happen today? Right. And even then, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. But um, I do listen every day, WBZ, and, and actually d- throughout the day, because it's radio, it, I don't have to sit right. and watch something. I can do whatever I'm doing, multitasking, yep. listening to this in the background. Right. Um, and then if I want to pursue a story, right. I can Google it. Right. Okay, yeah, I heard about that thing happening. Let me look at that some right. more. Um, so that's what I do is start with that credible source right. that I know has been around for a long time. Right. It's not it doesn't seem to be liberal. And, it doesn't seem to be right. conservative. It seems to just report the news. Well and I like when I listen to them a lot as well and I like that they bring both sides into the story That's what because I'm it's so easy to get in a frame of mind, and I actually like to hear conservative and liberal and, right. and all those and opinions. And then we make up our minds. Because I, I don't fit hard right. in either category right. so to me I like to hear that because we can what we're here for is to learn from others and learn from each other and right. and ultimately I think make good choices for our kids and our lives and our families and our communities I so totally agree you know and I think yeah. news comes into play with that right and what I'm noticing a lot lately that and I'm catching myself doing this the anger mm. that the news brings out in me and, and, and I have to catch myself a little bit on that and I you know, I think anger is good, and I think that what what well, it's starts righteous indignation, right? How could this be happening, right? Kind of anger, and and that's a hard thing. And I've had to explain a lot of things to my daughter lately, who's thirteen yeah. years old, and right. that's you know, like why, like how can this happen? How does this work? How does it, you know? And you know, from a child's eyes, it kind of helps you because then you look at it more objectively. You know, like how would you describe it to a child? And I think is is you know when we discuss with other human beings that tone should be a little tempered maybe or more you know because I think that would ultimately help us decide what news sources we chose because I get myself kind of wound up a little bit on certain issues too right of course and and I you know you I mean I was in the car today and um, had the news on but I had a four-year-old in the back seat because I babysit and it was yeah. driving her back from preschool. Yeah. But there was a report on about a murder. So yeah. she, you know, so I had to, you know, it's parental guidance. Right. I, I don't need to hear who was killed. Right. So, and I certainly don't right. want her. And what's so murder? You have to I mean, like, does that question That's it. So come she up didn't hear it. You, but as yeah. soon as I started to hear, well, there was a, you know, something in, and I went, yeah. So you don't, I mean, even, even listening to the news, you can choose the news you use right you know do you need to listen to all who shot whom right. not necessarily right. 
Um, do we need to know, you know, if there's a gunman loose in our town? Yes. Right. So there are things that we need and there are things that we can, right. we can just, you know, okay, fine. I'm sorry that happened, but I, I can't focus on that. Right. Like you were saying. Well, it's, and I it think, takes you know, this, this topic, and Margie and I talked about it a few weeks ago, I think it's really important for us to kind of decide how it affects our lives and how we, we kind of move forward. And, and I was glad we talked about this segment because I thought yeah. it was really important given the divide. I see a great divide. And the statistics show it a little bit, but not as much as I thought. Divide in? Just people. Yeah. Americans or opinions. I, I find the divide is getting further one side or the other, and I don't think that truly represents everybody, but I think we're being put in a little bit of a position to maybe pick a side, and I don't think that all sides are, you know, at I, the I think, table. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I just feel like there's, you right. know, like just from my eyes, I see, well, you either got to be liberal or you got to be conservative. Well, the other thing is, you know? this was from a Pew Research study mm -hmm. in 2014. Yes. But we don't know who's answering the phone right. to answer the study. Right. If I see, surveys, if I, do I a lot see, of surveys. you yeah. know, a, a caller ID that I don't recognize where it says unavailable, yeah. I don't get that phone. Right. You know, so right. I think it. One that thing is, is tricky. who's answering the phone and to, who's participating in the survey. Right. Where are they taking the survey? There are so many little right. variables in anything like that. Well, the other one I picked up was from a university. So it was a very different, it had similar, it was a newer, I was looking for a newer survey because I saw the 2014. Yeah, yeah. And I think in three years, things have changed quite a bit, three and a half almost, since and that's when the survey results came out so i would say almost four years yeah so then what do you you know like a What's university will have a different skew yep. because of the demographic there yeah so all right so we have about one minute yes um if you really would like to tell us we'd love to hear what you have to say what's your new source um but you'll have to make it really fast because we're almost out of time <laughs> we've been talking too and much. we will next week on october 25th we will have a um fabulous episode from the past we will not be here live on the 25th but we'll be back on november 1st or 2nd whatever the wednesday is to talk a little bit about should we celebrate halloween in the schools um maybe a little bit about um well some some of the issues that are happening in our town and in our world we and hope we you'll love join to us hear you hear from you on any ideas you'd love to for us to talk yeah. about but Let i hope our, on facebook yeah i hope our conversation sparks some ideas and thoughts in your head on um, on news and um, opiate abuse and um, Columbus Day and Indigenous People's Day. Yep. Thank Feel free you. to email us yeah. or let us know on Facebook. Yeah. See you next time. Thank you.